This is a field test report on an anomaly that was done in Kentucky. Uh, the following report is anomaly located using different LRL MFD equipment. Ring theory was used to determine frequencies. The LRL 500 was used for pinpointing the anomaly and tracking. This report spans three years and over 25 surveys using the ArcGeo logger and ground resistivity. When a large anomaly is tracked and the target is other than the element searched for, samples are collected and sent to read laboratories for testing. Complex harmonics was found this way. I hope this report encouraged you in that LRL MFD systems with the human body is detecting sensing some type of field. Once in a while we locate an anomaly like this one. We are always working on increasing the response by frequency and search techniques. This was done using the ArcGeo logger and XL Garrett XL500 with a three foot coil. Here's a picture of the site. There were three targets. This was sent from a, uh, sent to a dowser. Um, this maps from a dowser. At the location, he claims there are three different targets. The party that did the survey was interested in the silver coins in the wooden box. A 500 was set up just off the road here. And the user track inwards to the target location, as you can see, is a great distance from here to here. We treat all locations as anomalies until we get surveys done with metal detectors and ground resistivity to verify a target is present. The frequency used was based on ring theory for silver. Since the silver was supposed to be in a wooden box, we combined silver and wood together and had it hits on silver alone and silver and wood combined. The problem with adding wood is that trees covered this area at some time no doubt and this was in 2006 this picture and survey was done. This is a field, a grain field and it's still used every year so the user had to locate the same area after the grain was cut each time and redo the surveys. Over three years the surveys and location of the anomaly stayed consistent. The following plots are from different surveys over the same location. Okay, you notice that the space between the targets, the user has not collapsed a ring yet using the electronic weight cancel on the 500. When he shot the line from this position, the two outer ring points were in line and he thought the ring was collapsed. But when he moved 90 degrees, from the first position he saw was there was still 11 foot ring so increasing the EWC moved the ring and collapsed to the center meaning when he shot from this direction these were the strongest points on the ring he had one line which is generated was set out this direction but when he moved 90 degrees around he had a line going here and a line going here and one to the center. So as it increased the weight cancel, these two lines moved into the center of the target. This is the actual plot that was set up. This was the two points on the plot. The anomaly is actually in the center right here. Here's another plot looking at it. Um, I asked him to locate the north, south, and uh, the west positions and the um, there's two strongest points on the plot were east and west where north and south had no strong points. It was just on the east and west position of this anomaly. It's the signal line in relation to the poles. Here's another plot that shows the degrees off also. I think it was um I think it was three degrees off of of um east to west. Eighty degrees, I'm sorry. 
The ring was 11 foot. Plot showing the ring as strongest points on the ring. Now this is ground resistivity of the same area. Still the, the, um, the strong points show up. You can barely see the other one here. This was done with ground resistivity. Also showing the anomaly. All detectors used since this this um, anomaly, which was a pulse induction, two box, uh, I believe both a Garrett and a White's. And here's Glenn with the LRL 500. I mean, I'm sorry, the uh, X Garrett XL 500. Um, before the dig, he started um, center the target, and make sure they had it marked correctly. From the plots done with the Argeo logger, the depth was determined to be about 3.5 to 4 foot in depth. The depth is determined by taking the total area and dividing the distance. By knowing a, the sample distance when walking the grid, one can determine depth. So, in other words, on this plot here, they used a 3 foot coil. So here's the anomaly this distance to this distance of the total field right here was about eight foot or so not counting the um, I'm talking about just this area the green area and the orange area so half of that's about four three something to four maybe up to five feet that's how we determine depth So now, this is Bob with his tractor. He has an attachment on there for putting um, fence poles in. So he starts putting holes in the ground here. Holes were drilled around the target so the target was not damaged. And then here's Bob. They cleared out the rest of the dirt from the center. Of course, it taken turn. Bob doesn't look too happy there. Here's Glenn checking the hole again, make sure they're still on target. This looks like a big uh, dinosaur footprint, a T-Rex hole. Okay, what they found was some highly mineralized pocket and they removed the samples for Reed Laboratories. Uh, the unit, remember, was set for silver on this particular um, site. And these were the frequencies that was used. The target turned out to be a high, high concentration of elements. This is not unusual because combined element frequency can end up on or near the single frequency you are using. This is how I came up with complex harmonics and ring theory. We always send uh, anomaly samples to check out what's in them to help refine frequencies and for verification. I'm releasing this not to show we dug empty hole because it was not an empty hole. There was silver in, in ore form. Other than these large hunt Similar and smaller targets are found from time to time, which are coins, silver coins, um, gold watches, and other smaller targets have been tracked large distances. The frequency for silver that was used on this survey was 79.8 hertz. The combination of silver and wood was 29.13 hertz. If you are looking at silver content per ton, it's not bad at all. I took the iron and aluminum and combined them to find the frequency was 72.45 which was the highest uh, elements per ton in this survey we got back from Reed Laboratories. We found that the prominent elements combined are close to the frequency that was used which could 